dear students today i will talk on reproductive cycle in mammals special reference to ostrus sac okay so let's start it. first of all cycle means a process starts from a point to next and next to the earlier one again and the process repeats and repeats likewise so the reproductive cycle here means egg forms in the female body and performs its duty like fertilization or dies off and the body removes the unfertilized egg through vagina or reabsorbed inside uterus and then again the body forms an egg which then repeat the previous actions this process goes on repeatedly in the female body so to know the reproductive cycle properly we must know the female reproductive system here comes the ovaries present in the reproductive system where oocyte develops and becomes mature ovarian follicle and through the fallopian tube the ovum the mature ovum travels to the uterus cervix and vagina okay so the definition for reproductive cycle is it is the periodic changes that occur once about every lunar month that is 28 days in the female reproductive organs that is or ovary and uterus during the reproductive period from puberty puberty means at 11 to 14 years of age time until menopause they include the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle it starts in puberty normally continues throughout the reproductive years of female so the monthly female sexual and reproductive cycle involves the activities of hypothalamus, pituitary gland, ovaries, uterus, uterine tube, vagina and mammary gland. So one has to remember when you are thinking of reproductive cycle, you are only thinking of ovary and uterus. But it is not only the ovary and uterus. There are so many other changes which are occurring in the female body under influence of various hormones. There are changes in the ovary, there are changes in the uterus, there are changes in the hormone level, there are changes in the epithelium layer of vagina as well as in the mammary gland. So the female reproductive cycle is actually a combination of two different cycles, ovarian cycle and uterine cycle. Mammals show two different kind of reproductive cycle one is menstrual cycle which occurs in primates and the other one is a stress cycle that occurs in non primates now the question is what are the non primates and primates so primates are the last order of mammal of the 16 mammalian orders Normally, people think primates are only man, a monkey. But it is not only up to this. The three example we used to talk about are belong to the group simian. That means the man, ape and monkey are belong to the group simian. Which are also known as anthropoids that have fused skull. But prosimian are also a group of this kind of organism which includes lemur, loris, terzier which have grooming claw on the index finger of hind foot. Okay. So these six organisms, men, ape, Monkey, lemur, loris, terzier are 
primates. So, primate is the order of class Mammalia, superclass Tetrapoda, phylum Chordae, and all the female mammal except these six organism show the ostrich cycle. For example, cows, tigers, rats, and the rest six organism will show menstrual cycle. Okay. So now coming to the menstrual cycle. Our reproductive cycle includes the ovarian phases that are follicular, ovulatory, and luteal phases. And the uterine phases that are menstrual, proliferative, and secretory phases as a whole which is called menstrual cycle where follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, estrogen, progesterone plays key role and it occurs in the female body simultaneously with the ovarian cycle. So a typical menstrual cycle in women is of 28 days cycle. In this cycle the body shed its unfertilized egg, damaged endometrium, blood capillaries and a lot of blood through vagina. So moving towards the ovarian phase, we first get the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle. Here in the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle is of 1 to 13 days cycle. 13 days cycle means 1 to 13 cycle days is here in the follicular phase and occurs simultaneously with the menstrual and proliferation phase of the uterine cycle. The menstrual phase occurs in the cycle days 1 to 6 while the proliferation phase occurs in the cycle days 7 to 14. During the menstrual phase the statum functionalis layer of the endometrium is shed. This phase occurs during the follicular phase. So during the follicular phase the hypothalamus is releasing gonadotropin releasing hormone which stimulates the adenohypophysis or our anterior pituitary to release the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. This follicle stimulating hormone then stimulates the follicle in the ovary to become mature. One follicle will mature into what is called a graphene follicle which will release a mature egg called ovum okay as the follicle mature it steadily releases estrogen which causes the uterus to rebuild the statum functionalis layer of endometrium during proliferation stage for possible implantation of a fertilized ovum okay so once the graphene follicle is mature estrogen peaks to a point where it will cause a positive feedback loop to the adenohypophysis of the pituitary gland which will cause a massive amount of luteinizing hormone release which is known as luteinizing hormone surge. This luteinizing hormone causes the wall of graphene follicle to break down and helps release the egg. Okay. The luteinizing hormone also turns the follicle into corpus luteum. 24 to 36 hours after the luteinizing hormone surge, ovulation takes place. Okay. Ovulation tends to occur on the cycle day 40.
Next is the secretory or luteal phase, which occurs simultaneously as well. During luteal phase, the corpus luteum is formed, which releases progesterone and estrogen. And these hormones play a key role in making the endometrium ready for possible implantation. Okay. If pregnancy doesn't occur, the corpus luteum will die in 14 days and turn into corpus albicans. Okay. Diagram is showing the same. And progesterone and estrogen level will drop and menstruation starts in the day one as the endometrium breaks down and superficial middle layer of the tissues of endometrium broken down and released through the cervix and the vagina and this cause a fluid containing blood to be released from the vagina that normally last for one to five or eight days which is our menstruation okay so, this will signal the hypothalamus to release gonadotropin releasing hormone that, cause, that causes the adenohypophysis to release follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone causing the reproductive cycle to start again and if fertilization occurs the fertilized ovum will release human human chorionic gonadotropin that will prevent the corpus luteum from dying so that pregnancy can be maintained and once this placenta is fully developed it will take over with the secretion of progesterone and estrogen which occur around eight weeks of gestation and the corpus luteum will die okay so finally when a female reaches puberty she usually has a menstrual period every month and estimated blood loss during this menstrual period is 30 ml approximately okay so large amount of blood so the start period is known as menarche. It doesn't happen until all parts of the girl's body or all parts of the girl's reproductive system have matured and are working together and the event occurs until the woman reaches menopause. Okay this much was for our menstrual cycle okay as it is special reference to our ostrus cycle this chapter is directly connected with our estrus cycle i'm going now i'm going to the estrus cycle so now coming to the ostrus cycle part it is the reproductive cycle of non primate female and generally defined as the period from one ostrus to the next okay it is a very dynamic process and gives the female the opportunity to become pregnant as we know that it occurs in non primate animals and the cycle is categorized by frequency of occurrence throughout the year means uniform distribution of estrus cycle regularly throughout the year jin logon mein pure year mein ekdam uniformly hota rehta hai particular particular time mein hota rehta hai 
estrous cycle. For example, cattle, swine, rodents. Like right? rodents means example of rodent. One example is a rat. We use for our experimental purpose. It has again the seasonal breeder which includes long day breeders are those animals in which cycle occur when the day length increases. For example, this mare and short day breeders are the animals in which cycle occur when day length decreases. And example, sheep, goats. Okay. The next one is monoestras. In this case, one cycle occurs annually in the body of the animal. For example, or dogs and bears. So, estras is the time when the female is receptive to the male. It has two phases. Follicular phase that makes up 20% of the estrus cycle and luteal phase that makes up 80% of the estrus cycle. So, the follicular phase begins during luteal lysis and ends at ovulation. Okay. During this phase, follicles are growing and developing and dominant hormone in this particular phase is estrogen produced by the growing follicles. The luteal phase begins at ovulation and ends during luteal lysis. Follicular phase was started during luteal lysis and luteal phase is ended during luteal lysis. Following ovulation, the ovulated follicles undergo transformation that is luteinization to become the corpus luteum. The process of making corpus luteum is termed as luteinization. So during luteal phase, the corpus luteum secretes progesterone hormone which is the dominant hormone of this luteal phase. Now coming to the stages of estrus cycle or you can say phases of estrus cycle. So now the estrus cycle is comprised of four stages proestrus, estrus, metaestrus and diestrus stage. So proestrus and estrus are part of or follicular phase and metaestrus and diestrus are part of the luteal phase. So now, now I am coming to the proestra stage which continues for 1 to 5 days of the cycle. It is the period between the time when progesterone decline and corpus luteum regresses and the on onset of estrus happens. It is the period of major endocrine transition when progesterone dominance changed to estrogen dominates under influence of follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. So during proestrus, the developing follicles are secreting estrogen and selective follicles are then recruited for ovulation. Here the ovulin, ovarian follicles with enclosed ovum increased in size and estrogen absorbed from the follicles into bloodstream stimulate the increased vascularity and cell growth of tubular genitalia. 
in preparation of extras and pregnancy here are the diagrams or photographs showing the cell structure during proestrus stage now moving to the estrus phase it is the time when the females are receptive to male in other term this is the time when the females are willing to mate with male so during estrus stage body produces heat that attracts the male during estrus body produces heat estrus means heat on so during estrus the female displays several behavioral changes and estrogen is the dominant hormone during this stage and causes behavioral changes and also going to cause the physiological changes within the reproductive tract increased level of estrogen stimulates the release of luteinizing hormone releasing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone decreases due, due to estrogen and inhibition during or shortly after estrus ovulation occurs due to major surge in luteinizing hormone which is again due to luteinizing hormone releasing hormone luteinizing hormone releasing hormone ekhane stimulate korche luteinizing hormone ke barte and the estrus stops once ovulation occurs okay here the diagram and the photograph showing the st cell structure during estrus stage now the metastro stage it is the stage it is uh, it is the period between ovulation and the formation of corpus luteum during early metastrus both estrogen and progesterone level are low and ovulated follicle undergoes transformation to become corpus luteum in late metastrus there is a hike in progesterone hormone level and estrogen level falls endometrium lining thickens and uterine muscles show increased development here these are the metaster stage photographs of metaster stage and these are the photographs of diester stage so during now during diester stage the corpus luteum becomes fully functional and the corpus luteum is secretes sustained level of progesterone it is the period of maximum luteal function which ends when corpus luteum is destroyed by luteolysis this stage continues for 10 to 14 days in general that is from some species to species but in general it continues for 10 to 14 days so next is if pregnancy doesn't occur then the uterus will secrete luteolytic factor prostaglandin f2 alpha hormone to cause luteolysis means regression of corpus luteum and 
the corpus luteum will become non functional corpus albicans just before the next phase okay and during this whole thing progesterone level are declining in the blood stream and the body prepares for the next estrus again so after this here is the diagram showing the changes in the ovary during ovarian cycle various changes takes place and next one is the n estrus stage or n estrus phase after diestrus stage proestrus estrus metaestrus and diestrus a complete a completion of a complete estrus cycle n estrus phase comes which is the long period of inactivity between sexual seasons when no regular estrus cycle occurs and ovaries become relatively inactive as there is no follicular growth follicular growth or development and no corpus luteum formation okay so next we are moving towards the difference between menstrual cycle and the estrus cycle as both are reproductive cycle so first difference is menstrual cycle occurs in primates and estrus cycle occurs in non primates okay now the real difference is in menstrual cycle there is a phase known as menstrual phase or bleeding phase and during this phase lot of blood damaged uterine tissue blood capillaries unfertilized ovum comes out of the body through vagina whereas in estrus cycle there is no bleeding phase in the in their reproductive cycle or reproductive phase means no menstrual phase is seen in the animals having estrus cycle the damaged uterine tissue blood capillaries and fertilized egg are used to reabsorb in the uterus only and if there is a bleeding phase if there is a bleeding phase then it will be in negligible amount so there is bleeding phase in menstrual cycle and no bleeding phase in estrus cycle the next difference is in the estrus cycle there is a phase called estrus phase during which a lot of sexual heat is generated in the female body and the female copulate only during this phase except this phase female don't permit to copulate or avoid mating whereas in menstrual cycle there is no such phase and sex urge is not increased during menstruation and they can copulate all along the time but don't permit copulation during menstrual phase of the cycle so this was the main difference and here you can see it is divided into six points okay you can make this way so this was all about our reproductive cycle and hope it will help you in your preparation so thank you let's see let's meet on our next class okay thank you